Hey there students, welcome back to the next segment on our study of the colonial encounter between European colonists and Native Americans. I've already talked about New Spain, so if you haven't seen that, be sure to take a look at that. And now I'm going to talk about New France, about the French colonial adventure into the New World and the encounter between the French and the Native Americans. Now, first of all, let's take a look at the territorial claims. The French had a very large territorial claim. They claimed the bulk of Canada. Of course, we've also got some British claims there that are going to become problematic, uh, leading the French and Indian War. And then you have Louisiana. Now, this isn't the Louisiana that I grew up in, the state. Uh, this is big Louisiana. This is Louisiana that stretches all the way from the mouth of the Mississippi to uh, Minnesota and uh, the Great Lakes and all that kind of stuff. All of that would have been considered French Louisiana. And the French, when La Salle got to the mouth of the Mississippi, the French decided that they were going to claim all of the land that surrounded not only the Mississippi, but every tributary of the Mississippi River. So this gave the French a very large colonial claim. Now, the problem that the French had is that their areas of settlement didn't take up anywhere near this. So while the French had the largest colonial claim, we see that uh, they also have the smallest area of settlement. So this isn't a lot of good if you can't defend it, and France is going to end up losing all of this after the French and Indian War. So keep in mind that we've got a big colonial claim, but few colonists to back it up. And the French are primarily interested in not settling because the French really don't leave their country all that much. But they want to make money just like anybody else. They want to take advantage of the colonies for purposes of mercantilism and all of that. But they want to trade furs primarily is what they're doing in Canada. Um, that you have these fur traders that go over there and they are trying to make money living in settlements, usually forts. Uh, here is a painting of Fort Detroit. Now this is after the British took it over. You see some Indians trying to besiege it. But this is what a French settlement would have looked like. A trading post with a simple palisade around it. Not anything too threatening. The French aren't bringing a lot of colonists. They're there to make money. And they are making alliances with the Indians that they encounter in Canada. And the reason for this being that they they want to have friends because they need friends. In order to trade furs, you've got to have somebody to trade with. The Indians know how to get the furs. They know where they are. And if the French want the furs, then they're going to have to have a positive relationship uh, with these Indians. So when their Indian allies went to war, they would equip them with technology and they would help them out. Are they doing this just out of the kindness of their heart? No, not necessarily. I mean, this is good business. Uh, typically, what they call it today, relationship marketing. That the French realize that the closer we can get uh, to these Indians, then the more they're going to help us achieve our goals of making money through the fur trade. And not only were the French friendly to the Indians as far as helping them in war and all of that stuff. But also keep in mind that for Indians, if you are in business with somebody, you should also be their friend. If you have a kin relationship, even better. And that's the way that is today. A lot of times people are in business with members of their family because they can trust those people. And if you look at this painting, this is a really interesting painting from the mid-19th century of fur traders descending the Missouri. Now this is the sanitized name because if you look a little closer here, you see this French fur trader, but then you see a young man that looks like he could be his son. And when you look a little closer, you see that his son has some Indian features to it. And the reason for this is because it was not unusual for a French trader to marry into an Indian family, take an Indian wife. This was going to help him do business and build this relationship. The original title of this painting was French Trader half-breed son. But in the climate of the mid-19th century and the taboos against interracial marriages, the people exhibiting the art decided to give it a more sanitized title. 
And then there are the French Jesuits. Like the Spanish, the French have an organized program of evangelism. But the difference is the French Jesuits don't really make missions and they're not telling the Indians come to them, learn our language. The French Jesuits are going out into the Native American settlements and they are spreading the gospel there and they are using the native tongue. They are not expecting the Indians to learn French. They are using the Indian language. Uh, they are becoming like them in an effort to win them over to the gospel. So like the Spanish, the French have a dual motive of making money but also converting the natives to Christianity. Now, I've got another video talking about the relationships of the colonial powers and the Native Americans, but it's worth mentioning here this analogy that I use with General Patton. Lead me, follow me, or get out of my way. Now, which one sounds most like the French and their attitude toward Native Americans? It would be, lead me. Show us how to trade with you. Show us how to make money. Show us how to help you defeat your enemies and let us cooperate together. Teach us your language. Let our Jesuit priest go out to you. Lead us. Let us know how to do business with you and how to build this relationship. And let's look at a quick graphic organizer and look at the French as far as where they're settling, who's coming, their religion, and all of that. So the French are colonizing Canada, the area around the Mississippi River, what we would call Louisiana, Big Louisiana. Their religion was Catholic. Interested parties, you have fur traders and priests. Their primary economic activity being the fur trade. Their settlements being trading posts, usually just wall trading posts with very few Frenchmen there. Um, not bringing a lot of family members. You don't see a lot of French families coming. These are a lot of people who are coming to uh, trade and maybe live here for good if they took on an Indian wife, but a lot of these people are just coming in for a rotation and they'll go back. There was an organized program of evangelism, but of course it was in a different spirit than we saw from the Spanish that this is in the spirit of lead me, let the priest come to you, although we would like to convert you to Christianity. So that does it for the French. Keep in mind, uh, take a look at my series on Colonial America and the Colonial Encounter. Would love for you to watch more of those videos if you're interested. And uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and these videos are helping you. Go to my website, uh, www.tomritchie.net. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, at Tom Ritchie, Facebook. Like, dislike, comment on the video. Let me know what you think and how I can help you more. I'm out for now, but I'll be back. Until next time.